And welcome uh, to our second episode of uh, Modern Modding Highlights, uh, where we aim to take a brief look at just a number of major mod releases from each week or month, without going into a crazy amount of detail, uh, just giving you some quick, uh, easy to watch mod recommendations to, uh, you know, uh, whet your curiosity. And today, uh, we're taking a look at uh, some of the just notable uh, mods from the second week of May, uh, which saw the uh, release of 28 uh, new mods from Arwind, and uh, the highlights of which you'll uh, see in a moment. But uh, first, as always, the links are uh, down below. Uh, so let's begin with perhaps the biggest content mod release out of this batch, uh, Heart of the Avlothi uh, Nissus by the Heart of the Avlothi team. Uh, this mod is a massive makeover of the uh, city of Nissus, expanding this once uh, sleepy mining village with uh, new buildings, uh, cave dwellings, and uh, even some tent-based housing for mine workers, and also overhauling the just uh, the uh, visuals of much of the town here, uh, with amazing just uh, new scenic additions to the Anissus Temple and the Stone Arch that uh, leads into town, uh, designed to enhance Morrowind's alien feel. Uh, Heart of the Avlothi uh, utilizes the game's just original concept art uh, to paint a just a new vision of Nissus, uh, which also includes uh, new interior overhauls a new quest, and uh, just a lot more for you to discover here. Uh, you can check out a more detailed uh, showcase of this mod uh, down in the uh, video links below. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, we must move on. Uh, so next, uh, we're highlighting Dow's Lights by Operator Jack, a mod uh, clearly inspired from the famed uh, Thief games. Uh, Dow's Lights allows you to turn off uh, really any lights by just merely hitting them with a thrown weapon, unlike a dart, or a, you know, a throwing star, or by using a bow or a crossbow. And this works on lanterns, candles, uh, even open fires, allowing you to uh, sneak around in the darkness undetected like a true master thief. Uh, these lights will eventually return after a while, uh, so you don't need to worry about causing a permanent lighting problem in, uh, you know, interiors. Uh, but this is a rather just a fun mod for uh, thieving roleplayers, and if you want to uh, check out a detailed uh, showcase of this mod, uh, you'll find a link to uh, one by Lucivar just uh, down below. And next, uh, we're going to highlight a uh, more rooftop apartments by Wolf Shaman. Uh, this is an atmospheric uh, town mod expansion that uh, adds eight new apartments and uh, storerooms to the rooftops of uh, Balmora. Adding a little just extra population density to this uh, prosperous uh, trade town. Uh, this includes uh, five new NPCs, uh, all of whom have some uh, new dialogue to just add a little bit of uh, flavor here. And there's even a new quest included and a new player home that you can just, uh, you know, obtain. Uh, these uh, new rooftop additions uh, blend in uh, fairly well with the rest of Balmora here. And this mod is uh, designed to uh, just be compatible. Uh, with a number of other mods in Balmora, uh, such as uh, Kilkunda's Balmora. Uh, so, if you're looking to get a bigger, just uh, Balmora experience, uh, you'll want to give this mod a try. Uh, that said, uh, we've got another highlight to uh, go to here. Uh, this time with It's a Deal by Pete the Goat and Von Jangos. Uh, this is another one of those just uh, tiny, tiny immersion mods that can uh, greatly impact your game. And... Uh, basically, all it does is add a new line of so a spoken dialogue uh, that'll pop up uh, once you've completed a transaction with a merchant and, uh, you know, just uh, said goodbye. And now, a merchant might uh, thank you just as you're uh, leaving or uh, say things like a fair price. And, uh, real quick, uh, here's a brief encounter that you might come across. A special deal, yes. The pleasure is all mine, Outlander. If you'd like to check out another uh, video showcase of this mod, uh, there's a link uh, to one by uh, Lucivar uh, down below. But uh, that's all there is to see here. Uh, so our next highlight is uh, Pacifist Options uh, When It Makes Sense by Gavrilo93. As the name implies, uh, this is a mod that uh, just adds uh, Pacifist Options to uh, various vanilla quest lines from Arwind, uh, specifically for quests in particular. Uh, this isn't a blanket to pacifist mod though. Uh, these options have only been added to 
uh, these four quests because uh, they make sense to have just, you know, pacifist options. Uh, quests like the Loot the Mages Guild quest for the Thieves Guild, uh, where even if you were a, a member of the Mages Guild, uh, for uh, some reason the God would just always attack you anyway. And now, if you're a Mages Guild member, they won't. Other quests now have the option to uh, sneak and to uh, pickpocket to various quest items. And in general, uh, these are all just uh, fairly small but innovative uh, changes here. And uh, next, uh, we're taking a look at HUD Weapon Charge by Vernetch. A uh, simple but uh, fairly popular mod. A uh, HUD Weapon Charge merely adds a fill bar underneath your weapon icon. Uh, if you have an enchanted weapon uh, currently equipped, uh, just uh, showing how much charge is left on it. Uh, so, for example, if you have a, a Spark Sword, which, uh, you know, deals uh, shock damage, uh, you'll now be able to uh, keep track of how much charge your uh, sword has before uh, needing refill. Uh, this is an incredibly uh, simple mod, uh, but also extremely convenient and a great uh, gameplay addition here. Now, uh, moving on, our next highlight is Ghastly Glowy Fence by Wazabear. Uh, this is a graphical replacer for the ghost fence uh, surrounding a Red Mountain, uh, completely changing how the uh, ghost fence looks. Uh, with parallax mapping support, uh, this is an animated replacer that gives a certain amount of just uh, really otherworldly life to the ghost fence, with uh, glowy waves vibrating across the uh, surface of this uh, mystical force field, and glowing especially bright during the uh, nighttime hours, with a day-night switch, so uh, you know, you won't notice as much of a glow uh, during the day. Uh, this is just a really impressive uh, graphics replacer, and uh, one designed uh, to use OpenMW. It's uh, definitely worth checking out if you haven't done so already. But well, just uh, going on here, uh, we'll be taking a look at uh, Quest Rank Requirements by Piano Badger. And this mod uh, simply uh, forces players to advance through the ranks of any uh, particular faction before they can obtain more quests here. Uh, in uh, Vanilla Morrowind, it was often possible to go through a large number of quests uh, before uh, you were required to advance in rank, uh, so you could basically uh, farm quests uh, regardless of skill level, and then do a bunch of advancements just all at once. Uh, this mod takes a more immersive approach with uh, quest givers forcing you to advance in rank, uh, which requires uh, meeting uh, you know, skill requirements just as well here, uh, before they'll give you any more quests to do. It's a simple change, but it's a potentially immersive one, and that'll make you feel like you're actually making progress as you do errands for your favorite factions. But anyway, our next highlight is Early Transport to a Mournhold uh, by Necrolesian. Again, this is just another fairly straightforward mod uh, that uh, simply makes it possible for you to gain transport to Mournhold uh, before you've been attacked by the Dark Brotherhood. And uh, this is uh, primarily meant to be used with one of the various expansion or Dark Brotherhood delay mods, uh, which uh, delay the, uh, the attacks by the Dark Brotherhood until you've reached uh, some level or main quest requirement. Uh, but these expansion delay mods also mean that you can't access, uh, you know, Mournhold, at least not early on. Uh, so that's where this mod comes in, including changes to make sure that you can't just, uh, you know, skip the Dark Brotherhood attacks and go uh, straight to the rest of the Tribunal main quest. And this is a potential convenience mod uh, for those wanting or needing to go to Mournhold without going through uh, just all the hoops of the uh, Dark Brotherhood attacks. And it's definitely worth checking out if you already have an expansion delay installed. Uh, finally, our last highlight here is FMI uh, Gavrilo's Package by Gavrilo93. Another just rather small mod uh, Gavrilo's package here just aims to fix uh, three rather minor inconsistencies in the uh, vanilla game, uh, much like the other mods in the FMI series. And uh, this is uh, more of a slice of life mod uh, to make the game more consistent between lore and gameplay, uh, so the two are no longer at odds. Uh, in particular, uh, this mod uh, deals with uh, several inconsistencies in dialogue, uh, such as the fact that in uh, Vanilla Morrowind, and one of the items that you receive as part of a quest for the Tribunal Temple is a belt with the name of a saint from the Imperial Cult, uh, which given that these two uh, religious factions are just at odds here, uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, this mod replaces that belt with a robe that 
uh, properly has the name of an actual saint, uh, the Tribunal Temple. Uh, the other two fixes in this package are, uh, you know, along the uh, same lines. Uh, very minor, but they do bring some consistency to the game here. But that's our last highlight for uh, today, so, uh, you know, uh, stay tuned next week for another episode of Royal Modding Highlights. And in the meantime, uh, links are down below. Uh, so thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll just, I'll see you all next time.